Hello everybody, welcome back to another show, another film, another video. Um, today this film is going to be about what I call the Pentcom P6 mount. Um, I believe it is also known as the Kiev um, C mount. And I've got a variety of lenses and cameras here in front of you. And this is from the Soviet era. So um, these cameras were all built in communist countries before the collapse of the, uh, the former USSR. Um, two of them are Kievs. This one you've seen before in a video. This is a Kiev 88, but this is the CM version um, following the Hasselblad sort of naming convention. This one they called the 88CM, not to be confused with the normal Kiev 88. This one has a cloth shutter, uh, the, the original one has a metal shutter, so that's how you can tell the difference. Um, this big bad boy at the back is a Kiev 6C, and then that was related, uh, followed on by the, uh, the 60. Uh, that's a Pentacon 6. These are all 120 film cameras, they all shoot the 6x6 six six square format, the same as the Hasselblads or the Rollies and the Rolly Flexes. And um, they have a variety of different options, but today we're really talking about the lens mount because these cameras all share the same lens mount. I call it the P6, and that would be named after this camera, the Pentacon 6. Um, this was made in East Germany, same factory that produced the um, Praktikas, I believe and this one has got the more traditional kind of fitting and to attach and to detach the lens a bit like the Canon FD mount you've got this collar that you turn on the back here which is actually on the body and then the lens just comes straight out like that there's no turning of the lens very simple system all they have is a, an aperture thing here an aperture control pin on the back of the lens. I'll put that down and you can see it. This lens is a uh, 80 mil. Just as you have crop factors in the digital world, the crop factor also affects the film. We call full frame the same as 35 mil. Uh, this is 126 by 6 and the crop factor is about 0.55. So an 80 mil lens on medium format would be equivalent to about a 44 millimeter uh, on uh, 35 mil. So this is pretty much a standard lens. And it has a little ring on the back. Uh, this is the aperture ring here, it goes from 2.8 to 22. Normally the aperture of the iris is closed down and uh, that's all that does. There's no coupling for metering or anything like that. No electronics, completely manual. And to attach a lens, you'll notice on the top that there's a, uh, a screw at the top, normally in line with the aperture ring. And all you do is you just line that up with the top of the camera. There's a corresponding slot. And once it's in, you just turn the ring at the back of the lens, and that's your lens attached to your camera. Huge variety of lenses. Um, they range from, I think this is the widest, this is a, the 30mm um, fisheye lens. Look at that for a piece of glass, that's almost pornographic, isn't it? But this is a 30mm 3.5, so that would be equivalent to uh, 16, 16 and a half mil on uh, 35 mil full frame, but exactly the same. Just has the pin there and the registration pin at the top. So 30 mil is the widest that you can get. Um, there was a 500 mil lens, but the only longest one I've got is this big bad boy. Needless to say, these are all extremely heavy, and this is the 300 mil. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is the iris. That's, this is a preset lens; it doesn't have the, uh, the stop-down pin at the end. But there you can see the 
This is a Boca monster because just look at the, uh, the iris on that. And as I said, this is a preset lens, so it doesn't have the uh, the pin at the back, but it still registers exactly the same way with the, the screw at the top. So that's a 300mm f4, so that would be about 165mm uh, in terms of full frame. This one's wearing a 120mm on the Kia 6C. This is a 250, which is quite a lot smaller. This has got a standard 80mm lens on it. Uh, this is one of the more popular um, lenses. This is the Zeiss 50mm Flaptagon. So 50 would be about 26, 27mm equivalent. And these are called zebra lenses because of this pattern on them. There is a 120 Zeiss and a 180 Zeiss, but I don't have those yet. I haven't managed to collect those yet. Same thing has the pin on the back. And that's the lens hood for it. There are adapters available for these lenses, so you can use them on a lot of uh, digital cameras. This is an M42 adapter, so the lens just goes on the back in the normal way, and then it's an M42, which is a screw thread, commonly known as a Pentax screw thread mount. Um, you need to be careful when you've got a heavy lens on, you need to support the lens, because obviously it's going to rip the front of your DSLR off. Um, I also have a set of... Uh, extension rings this is used for macro work you can put these in different stages between your uh, these are automatic tubes as well so the, the aperture functions on them and uh, extension tubes there's also bellows available and um, there's a full range of accessories actually um, if you want to get into medium format slr photography i kind of recommend these but you need to have a bit of patience with them. Um, they're not completely reliable cameras, even at the best of times. And uh, I wouldn't really recommend it for starting out. I think the TLR route is probably the route to go. If you want interchangeable SLR medium format, um, I think these are quite a good choice. Um, this is a, a lens I bought by mistake. And this is a 65mm 3.5 as you can see, the mount looks quite similar, but it's actually a screw mount. And this is for the earlier Kiev 88. So there's two different mounts available. And this is on the wrong side. This should be on this side, who's a T6 mount. You can see quite clearly it's a screw threaded mount. And uh, this won't fit on any of these cameras, unfortunately. But it's a 65mm, so it's not any real big loss. Um, the CM is slightly different in that you have a... Rather than the collar, you have this sort of plastic lever. But the lenses are exactly the same. Registration pin. And that's all we have to do is to put that on there. So let's put a, this fat boy on there. Oh. So there's our pin, that lines up, that goes across there, and it's as simple as that. So it's a very nice mount, um, there's no real moving parts in it apart from the, uh, the, um, the turning part on the camera. Um, it's a huge system, you can have, I've got a prism, metering prism for this camera. I've got a metering prism for this camera. This currently is wearing a waist level finder. So waist level finders, there's magnification finders available. Uh, same for this, there's waist level finders available. So it's quite a good system to get into. There's quite a, lot, quite a large choice of cameras available and a huge range of lenses and accessories available. And it's a system I'd highly recommend. So. That's the Pentacon P6 mount and the Soviet era cameras or some of them um, that go with that makes up quite a nice system if you want to get into medium format at an affordable price rather than uh, the very high prices that things like uh, 
the Mamiya RBs, RZs, which are those 6x7, Pentax 6x7s, and even Hasselblads, they're, they're quite expensive. Whereas in this system, you could get a whole system and lenses, etc., for the same sort of price. And the lenses are very good, they are very sharp. Um, you know, like I say, the cameras have got their own peculiarities. The main rule I would advise you if you're ever using any Soviet camera, and that doesn't really matter what size it is, I do have some 35mm Soviet cameras and they're exactly the same. And that is before you change the shutter speed or before you do anything, cock your shutter, wind on. Um, if you try changing things up but before you've wound on, there's a good chance of wrecking the camera because they're all mechanical and that they are a variable quality some are better than others but if you can get a good one that's working then they're, they're very very rewarding to use they're extremely heavy they're, they're very very heavy uh, cameras they're not something you really want to take on a hike or if you're going to use it for landscape photography you want to be able to find a parking space close to where you want to take the picture really because they they are too heavy to be lugging around all day um, but then I think that's true of any system, whether it's a Mamiya system or, or a, even a Hasselblad system, particularly a Pentax 6-7 system. You don't really want to be lugging that around. Um, you're probably better with a rangefinder solution in that sort of case. But there we have it, folks. That's the introduction to the P6 system and some of the Soviet cameras and lenses that are available for it. Very high quality at quite an affordable price. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Comment down below and hope to see you in the next one.